Hi everyone, my name is Grace Sissa. I'm the CPA on staff with Projection Hub, and today I wanted to take a little time to walk you through our Salon Financial Projection Template. When you open this template, the first thing you're going to notice is two orange tabs on the left, several light blue tabs in the middle, and then several green tabs on the right. The orange tab are going to be this instructions tab, which you can see here, the investor dashboard, which we'll get to at the end, and then we'll move on to the light blue tabs. So the light blue tabs are the input tabs for this model. Um, so you'll be able to input your data on these tabs before moving to the output tabs, which are in green. So on the light blue input tabs, you will fill out the corresponding light blue cells with all of your company's data, which will then populate the financial statements on the right. So as you can see, the light blue tabs have example data filled in already. And that is just to direct you to the right kind of data to fill in. It's not necessarily industry standards or recommended data. Um, it's just kind of showing you what we're looking for in each category. So on the input assumptions tab, you're going to be filling out many of the balance sheet assumptions, um, company name and projection start date. And then we'll look at funds invested into the business, um, accounts receivable and inventory. Your fixed assets, which for a salon um, could be real estate improvements, equipment, um, any sort of furniture and fixtures, signage, all of that stuff goes in there. And then any loans that you're going to take out to get your business started. The next tab is the revenue model, the input revenue and cost of sales tab. So first we're going to show how your salon will be acquiring new clients. We'll look at the different services and costs of sales for each of those services. Um, which will also include a little bit of direct labor. And then the last section is product sales and their associated costs of sales as well. So starting back at the top with client acquisition and visits, um, we're gonna show the client acquisition model is based on advertising. So we're gonna pull the advertising spending from the other expenses tab, which you can see right down here um, is the next tab. It's gonna pull over the amount that you plug in there for advertising. And then we're gonna look at cost to attract one new client. Um, which here is set to $200, which is on the high end for a salon. And then the model will calculate the number of first time clients per month due to advertising. In this case, with the data we have entered, it's five. And the other way to acquire new clients, of course, is through organic sources. So word of mouth, um, Google searches, references, and referrals from other people. Um, all those are organic sources of clients. So you'll enter the number of clients you expect to receive from organic sources in your first month. And you can set an annual growth rate there as well. From there, you can determine the number of first time clients that become repeat clients, because we want to show the repeat client base growing over time. And you can see after all the new clients, we end up with 33 repeat clients joining um, as repeat clients in the first month. And then there's a churn rate here um, to show repeat clients leaving. Obviously, you'll have some kind of churn for any sort of customer base, whether people move away or switch salons, um, whatever it may be. And then you'll see your total regular client base building down here along the bottom. Then from there, you'll have the average number of visits per regular client per month. In this case, it's sent, set to 0.5, which means on average six visits a year. You can see if I change it to one, this will change to 12 visits per year. From there, we move on to the services that you'll provide and the cost of sales. So in the services menu here, you can enter um, any number of services as well. Um, you can use the ones we have loaded in, or you can change those up. You'll do the percent of client visits that are for each service. You'll note you'll want these to total 100% at the bottom, the average revenue for each service, and this will calculate the average overall revenue based on this percentage column here. Length of service in hours, um, percent of revenue that goes to an employee. So if you're paying your employees as a percentage of revenue, you can fill that out there. And then average cost of labor. So that's what you are um, paying out in direct labor costs if you're paying your employees hourly. And then cost of supplies for any sort of um, treatment. So for example, the chemical treatment has a higher cost of supplies, let's say a haircut here. The model will then calculate your average revenue per service, which is going to be based off the number of client visits during the month. Um, I'm sorry, that's based off this model here. And then your total revenue is going to be based off of um, the number of client visits per month multiplied by the average revenue per service. 
We will also calculate out your employees, employee costs and supplies costs down here. So um, the hourly wage is going to be coming from this column here. And then the um, supplies cost is coming from this column here. The model will then calculate out your cost of labor and cost of supplies and add those up to be the cost of goods sold for your services. The model is also going to help you calculate the number of employees you would need to properly run the salon based on the uh, clients that you have. So assuming that the average employee works 30 hours a week, um, you would need in the first month just 0.29 employees. Obviously, you'll have more than that. And then over time, you can see that the required employees grows as your client base grows. And that's just to help you with planning and to see if your numbers are reasonable. Um, obviously, if you adjust all your numbers and you need 15 employees in the first month, um, you can stop and think if that is feasible, if that's your plan, or if you need to adjust everything. Product sales is the next portion of revenue. So um, we've determined product sales by the number of customer visits that result in a product sale. Um, same sort of scenario here where you fill out the different types of products that you offer. And I always recommend putting these in broad categories rather than trying to list every single product that you offer. And then again, determine the percentage of sales. Um, and you'll want that to total up to 100%, then the average price for each product, the average cost to you for the product, and then the model will calculate gross margin for you. So then again, we're gonna look at the average revenue per product sale, and our product sales total revenue is going to come from the number of client visits multiplied by the percent of visits that result in a sale multiplied by the um, average sales dollars per client. And same for the supplies cost, except we're using the average cost of um, products for each client visit. The next tab is the input other expenses tab. Um, you can see right here the advertising is the first one here and that is used on our revenue tab to determine our clients from paid advertising. On this tab you'll enter your monthly operating expenses. Um, you'll enter the name, the category, which is going to be used on the investor dashboard, and then you can either have the expense be a fixed amount, for example, insurance is gonna be a flat 150 per month um, in year one and then move up to 154 per month in year two. And that is gonna be the same amount per month um, based on this. And then credit card fees that you can see here are calculated as a percentage of total revenue. So they're entered as 0.02, which is 2%. So those are gonna move each month with the, the, with the revenue. Um, and that is gonna be fees that you pay to Visa or MasterCard. Um, and you also have the option of having the expense calculated as a percentage of service revenue or percentage of product sales revenue as well. Um, so as I've already kind of mentioned, we break out months one through three separately here, and that is just to get you um, an opportunity to enter your startup costs in as well. So those are legal fees, um, whatever it might be to get your business up and running, you can enter those in the first three months. And then from there, we're gonna kind of summarize. So uh, for the remainder of year one, that's months four through 12, it's going to pull this amount for every month. Um, so for example, utilities and internet will be $300 a month for months, every single month in four through 12. Year two, it'll be $309 a month, et cetera. You can also enter your effective income tax rate here. The last input tab is the salaries and owner draw tab. So you as the owner have the option to pay yourself either a salary or to draw funds out of the business. Uh, if you plan to draw funds, you Put it down here in the owner draw column. If you plan to pay yourself a salary or you have another salaried employee such as a receptionist, you would pop them in up here. Um, you enter their job title, their salary, employer taxes, any benefits, that's annual benefits as well as annual salary. The month started, month ending, and you can double up employees if you want or triple up or whatever, however many employees. If you had five receptionists, you could put five right in the same line and then use your annual raise percentage as well. So those are all the input tabs. And then from there, the information you enter is going to populate on these green tabs. So after you fill out all these light blue ones, you shouldn't need to change anything on the green tabs. The first green tab is the at a glance tab, and that is going to show you a brief overview um, of all your financial data. You've got some summaries, at a glance, key ratios here, um, and some nice graphs and charts as well. And then we have the summary of each of the financial statements. So the financial statements in this model are the income statement summary. Um, the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. So the income statement summary is going to have the income statement but showing each of the year for five years. 
So you have your sales, your cost of goods sold, and your operating expenses here. The cash flow summary is very similar to the income statement. There are a couple items that show up on the cash flow statement that do not show up on in the income statement, and most of those are down here, um, such as cash from new loan and cash paid for fixed assets. So those items, they're not necessarily revenue or expenses, but do result in cash moving around in your business. And again, showing each of the year, every year for five years here. The balance sheet summary is going to show your assets, liabilities, and then equity, which is sort of the remainder of the, the equation there. Um, note that balance sheets should always balance, so that's one of the challenging parts of building your own financial statements, is it's really hard to get that balance sheet to balance. Um, our model is always going to balance, so that's not something you have to worry about here. And once you've scrolled through these summaries, here we've got the same financial statements, but broken out into each month for 12, or for all five years, so you'll see every single month. And this is to give you a little more detailed view. Um, and this is really helpful. For example, the cash list statement, you could check out the cash at the end of the period to make sure that it never goes negative um, for each of those 12 months. So you can get a little more detailed view there. So those are the financial statements that are produced. Um, if you're looking to get a loan from a bank, oftentimes um, I recommend providing the income statement summary um, the first year of the income statement. And then I also recommend you provide the um, input revenue and cost of sales tab. This is your revenue model to show how you're gonna get those numbers, um, especially the revenue numbers. The last step we have to talk about is the investor dashboard. So the investor dashboard is new to version two of all of our templates. And it is a way to see how sensitive your model is to various inputs of the model. So on this tab at the bottom, there's the original income statement, which is a summarized version of the income statement summary from your model. And this one is based on all of the inputs that you've already loaded into these light blue tabs. And then there's a modified income statement right next to it. And this modified income statement is going to be really similar to the original income statement, except for you can change some of the assumptions going into that income statement above by using the light blue areas. So for example, um, these are client visits in the model that you've already loaded into the light blue tabs. If you adjust those client visits in light blue down here, that is gonna change your revenue. Um, so you can see here our revenue in the modified income statement is slightly higher than that in the original income statement. And that's because we've been playing with some of the assumptions up here. So the investor dashboard is a great way for potential investors um, to see how sensitive your model is to these various inputs. And it's also a great way for you to look at different scenarios without having to change all the data that you work so hard to load into these light blue tabs. So that is a brief overview of our salon financial projection template. Um, we call this the employee model, assuming that employees are um, you're having employees rather than just renting booths. Um, if you like this model, uh, but you need some modifications to it, please feel free to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Um, we're also available to fill out the model for you. Um, I'm the one who developed this template and you'll likely hear back from me when you reach out to us. Um, and I'm always happy to answer questions or to help you fill it out or to modify it slightly so that it better fits your business. So don't ever hesitate to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com.